While nuclear and broader energy man demand for a range of services, including AI and data centers, is helping push utility stocks to record levels in recent days, including the stock of our next guest, PSEG. Well, joining us now is PSEG Chair, President, and CEO Ralph LaRosa, who is at his company's nuclear power plant in Salem County, New Jersey, one of three that the company operates. I love this, that we're going to be talking about nuclear here. So, Ralph, it's great to have you on the show. We just heard about PIPA reporting uh, from Georgia, and that's exactly where I want to start with you, the economics of nuclear. And after so many years of hearing how expensive it was, how costly it was, why it makes sense and is a compelling argument now. So, Morgan, I think, you know, PIPA did a really great job of reporting there, and, I, and she hit on all the key factors uh, it is expensive. It does take a long time to bring new plants online. We're not in the business of building uh, new reactors. We are operating the three reactors that we have behind me here, and we're operating them as safely and as low cost as we possibly can to make sure we're feeding the grid. But we have uh, had discussions with folks about, hey, do you want to put a new SMR-type reactor here at our site? We would certainly host that. Uh, operate and maintain it for somebody, but for, to put that capital use for uh, uh, with our company is not something our shareholders would be looking for us to be doing. Got it. Uh, in terms of the grid, how resilient is it, and what are you seeing in terms of the demand on it, especially as we do start to talk more about things like AI data centers and the electrification of everything? Yeah, Morgan, it is absolutely rising. There is no doubt about it. We're seeing it across the entire industry. Just for us here in New Jersey, we have seen about 800 megawatts of uh, new data centers that have come online uh, in the last year and a half, two years. So it's slow here, but it has started to pick up. Uh, Governor Murphy and his economic development team are really behind uh, AI and developing those types of jobs. And with that, you need data centers and the infrastructure. And so we're seeing that demand start to pick up here in New Jersey. What is it going to take from an infrastructure perspective to actually build out the, those, those future power needs? Yeah, you start with the transmission system, and we have uh, done that over the last 20 years since the blackout back in 2003. So we're well positioned as a company to do that. And I uh, will also have rebuilt many of our substations and switching stations after Superstorm Sandy. So you start with those core basics. You make sure that you have enough generation. We do have enough generation in PJM grid. We're 2 or 3 percent higher than uh, what their reserve margins they would like to have online. And so between that and having enough transmission and distribution, we're in a pretty good place, but it's going to be close. You know, if you start adding in electric vehicles, electrification of individual homes, we're going to continue to have to invest in those in those wires and continue to bring new clean generation on, on the grid. How meaningful is something like the IRA to your business? How much of that money has already been deployed? Morgan, that is absolutely key to us. Uh, that provided the stability that a company like ours would need to stay in the nuclear industry. We're in a deregulated marketplace, a merchant. These plants behind us are merchant. Without that backstop of the federal government, we would have been looking at closing these plants uh, five, six years ago in that, in that recent past. And because of the backstop that we had, first at the state of New Jersey, and now what we see at the IRA, uh, from Washington, we're able to count on that backstop and, and as a result run these plants and start to make investments for the long term. We're going to increase the capacity out of the two Salem units that we have. We're changing the operating uh, fuel cycle at our, at our boiling water reactor, the Hope Creek plant. And as a result, we're going to be putting more power on the grid and that IRA enabled all of this. Mm. And finally, we were having a conversation yesterday about some of the hidden costs of home, home ownership and some of the areas where inflation has been sticky. Yesterday, we were talking about insurance, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, but utility costs have gone up for many consumers, too. And I realize that looks different across states because of the regulatory environments and how much those shift across states. But what are you seeing in terms of pricing and how do you mitigate those costs at a time where you have everyone, including the Fed and the U.S. government, focused on inflation and bringing them down? Yeah, you know, I, we are seeing that across the board. Sometimes it's being driven by generation and, and higher cost of generation in different parts of the country. I can talk to you specifically about here in New Jersey. We've mm -hmm. done a really nice job of balancing those factors. We look back over 20 years and the average uh, uh, part of your take home pay that we would use in a utility uh, from, a, from an expense standpoint has remained pretty flat, anywhere from two to four percent. 4% for medium income and about 2% for low income because of the programs we have in place. That's been over 20 years. So we've worked with our regulators to do that. We're in the middle of a rate case here in New Jersey. 
It's our first one in six years. We have not raised the distribution costs over that entire period of time. Uh, it's about a nine percent increase that's you know spread over these six years. So we're pretty proud of the of the efficiencies that we've had in place. And again, working with those regulators, we've been able to keep the prices down here.